So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this uh, meeting of Derby City Council Cabinet on Wednesday, the 10th of June, 2020. Uh, Alex, could I just ask you to do a quick roll call for me of those in attendance on the call, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, we have all members of the Council Cabinet present today. So we have Councillor Chris Bowles, the Leader of the Council, Councillor Matthew Holmes, Deputy Leader, um, Councillor Mick Barker, Councillor Nicola Ralston, Councillor Jonathan Smale, Councillor Roy Webb, Councillor Yvonne, Yvonne Williams and Councillor Robin Wood. Also joining us on the call today are group leaders. So we have Councillor Baggy Shanker, Leader of the Labour Group, uh, Councillor Ruth Skelton, Leader of the Liberal, De Liberal Democrat Group, and Councillor Alan W. Graves, Leader of the Brexit Party Group. Um, we also have the Youth Mayor and Deputy Youth Mayor joining us on the call today, and um, also a number of officers. We have supporting officers from Democratic Services um, and IT, as well as presenting officers. We have um, Paul Simpson, the Chief Executive. We have Rachel North, the uh, Strategic Director of Communities and Place. Andy Smith, the Strategic Director of People Services. Um, we also have Emily Feenan, the Director of Legal Procurement and Democratic Services and Monitoring Officer. Um, we have Greg Jennings, the Director of Regeneration. Um, we have Heather Greenan, um, Director of Policy and Insight. Um, and just, sorry, just scroll down. And we have uh, Verna Bayliss, uh, Director of Partnerships and Street Pride, I believe. Um, I think that about, about covers it, but if I've missed anyone out, apologies. Thank you, Alex. In that case, then we'll move on to the agenda. Item one is apologies. Karen, do we have any recorded apologies? None received, Chair. Okay, so item two, late items. We do have a late item, which was agreed by the Chair of Exec Scrutiny and was actually discussed last night at Executive Scrutiny, but with your permission, I intend to deal with that after item seven, the recommendations from the Scrutiny Board. Um, so I'm going to move on to item three, the receipt of any petitions. I don't believe we have any petitions, Karen? No, are none. Okay. Identif identification of urgent items to which call-in will not apply, Karen? Uh, yes, the late item. Okay. Um, item five is any declarations of interest, members, please? I take it there are none. Uh, item six is the minutes of the meeting held on the 13th of May 2020, which I've read and seem okay to me. Is there a seconder, please? I move, Chair. Councillor Barker. So, Moving on to item seven, the recommendations from the Executive Scrutiny Board last night, of which there are a number, but as in common practice, what I'd like to do is to deal with those individual recommendations alongside each item. Uh, we do have the ability to display those uh, items in the course of those uh, recommendations in the course of discussion of, of the items. So. With that, if you bear with me a second, we'll move on to the urgent item, uh, which is, I think, going to be led out by Andy and then followed up by Councillor Williams. So over to you, Andy Smith. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so the purpose of this report is to seek agreement um, to implement certain flexibilities if required, if necessary, in relation to uh, specific duties as set out in the 1989 Children Act and the 2002 Adoption and Children Act. Um, just to thank you for taking uh, a late report. Uh, the reason for this is although the regulations which are within the context of the pandemic within the COVID-19 uh, environment that we're working in at the moment, even though the regulations state that the use of the flexibility should be approved and can be approved by Chief Officer. Uh, in line with our constitution, we've latterly formed a view that this should be a key decision uh, given the number of wards affected. So we made the decision um, really rather quickly to uh, try and take advantage of the Cabinet um, taking place today. So uh, appreciate you um, taking the late item. Uh, the specific regulations that have been relaxed are summarised in bullet points in section 4.1 of the report. I'm not going to read them out. Hopefully you've had a chance to, to look at them. Um, the guidance is clear that uh, local authorities should only take a decision to implement any of the flexibilities where issues such as staff shortages due to example
example, um, to sickness, uh, make it difficult or impossible to meet the original requirements and where using the flexibilities is seen to be the most sensible approach, which is risk based and in light of other demands or pressures on the service. It's important for clear decision making to take place around recording any decisions made um, so that we can produce this, for example, in any future inspections by Ofsted. It's proposed in the report that decisions to implement any of the flexibilities is agreed by me as a Director of Children's Services, informed by a discussion with the Director of Early Help and Children's Social Care, which is Sue Ann Lim, and uh, the Cabinet Member, Councillor Williams. You can see in Appendix 1 that given the dynamic nature of the flexibilities and the need right at the beginning of the pandemic to keep key aspects of the business going, we'd already implemented uh, some um, aspects of the flexibilities before they became flexibility for that makes sense. So for example, we made decisions very quickly to hold virtual fostering and adoption panels, which actually have been running really, really well. So we could keep the business of approving adopters, matching children, um, approving foster carers going. Um, and it's my understanding that many councils up and down the country did the same thing as soon as the lockdown uh, kicked in at the end of March. Um, so uh, decisions that we make, be it currently going forward or retrospectively, will be uh, held on a centrally maintained log, kept under review, with decisions made to end implementation of flexibilities uh, when no longer considered necessary, so we need to keep it dynamic. Um, as it currently stands, the government has only made provision to apply any of the flexibilities until the 25th of September, although it will clearly be subject to review in light of how the pandemic and the recovery progresses. So I'd ask Cabinet it um, to agree recommendations 2.1 and 2.2 in the report. Councillor Williams, did you want to add to that? Uh, no, Chair, I've got nothing to add at this point, but happy to talk on the recommendations from exec scrutiny. Shall we take any questions, uh, please, first, before we move to those uh, recommendations, if you can have them ready, Alex. Any questions first? Okay, so Alex, if you could put up the recommendations in relation to this late item from last night. Okay, so the board received the report um, and and the recommendation was that they resolved to recommend to Council Cabinet that it agrees a mechanism to ensure that if, flex if flexibilities are introduced, that this is reported to Council Cabinet on, a number on another public Council meeting in a timely manner. Um, Councillor Will uh, Williams, do you want to respond to that? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm happy to accept that recommendation. Um, I will ensure, first of, first of all, that um, this is raised at any of my um, Cabinet members' briefings and put onto the agenda as a standing item until such times as the uh, flexibilities are changed, um, but also happy to make sure that it goes through to children children and young people's scrutiny as well um, to make sure they have a full understanding of what's going on and why it's happened. Thank you. Thank you. So unless there are any other questions on that, any other indications? And then in that case, we have two recommendations, 2.1 and 2.2. Are we agreed, Cabinet, please? Agreed. 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 So it seems to be unanimously agreed. Thank you very much. Then we'll move on to item eight which is in respect of the housing strategy. Who we're going to, who's going to lead out on this? I will do that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Rachel North, um, Chief Director, Committees in Place. Okay, the, um, the housing strategy is a 10-year strategy uh, which is, is, has been developed in partnership with a range of our stakeholders across the city. It is an overarching strategy, taking into account the whole of the housing market, so looking at the interventions and the support and the direct action the Council may take across all 10 years, so the private rented sector, owner-occupied sector, and also obviously our social housing stock. 
It has a really important role to play in that piece of the jigsaw around our policy framework for the city and absolutely recognising the role that housing plays as a fundamental contributor towards the health and well-being of our residents and also regeneration ambitions for our city. So it is very much an overarching strategy. We have delayed it slightly in bringing it to Cabinet on the basis of understanding the implications of the COVID emergency on the housing market. So there has been an assessment made of potential impacts around parts of that market that might affect some of these interventions. However, that clearly is not you know, finished. The, we, no one is um, able to, to predict exactly what's going to happen around our housing market. In fact, our whole society, based on the coming out of this you know, extraordinary period of history, but we have done an assessment and are comfortable that it is flexible enough to be able to meet any of those changes that might come about as we begin to change and you know, come out of the COVID emergency into the whatever the new normal might be. It also reflects a sense of a change in national profile for the housing agenda, a real sense of understanding some of the pressures and the strains in our housing market as a nation. So really, in terms of affordability of housing, some of the issues around the private rented sector, our ability to enforce conditions in the private rented sector and security, it's very interesting that obviously at the moment, um, the COVID emergency has meant that no evictions are possible in the private rented sector for a period of time. And yet we know that the largest part of our homeless cohort come from the ends of assured short hold tenancies in the private rented sector. So some real issues there to be aware of as we move forward. And also clearly priority around homelessness and recent announcements from national government, again, tied into the COVID emergency, but also important despite it, about how we support the most difficult um, cohorts of chaotic rough sleepers. So it is a strategy based on an understanding of our market, the data and information that drives our housing market across the Derby context, and it is supported by a number of specific housing policies that I'll come on to just a little bit. There are four key strategic priorities that the strategy is focused on. How we use the best use of our existing stock in the city, and that is across all tenures. So particularly, how do we make best use of our own occupied properties, those in the private rented sector, things like empty properties that are empty, bringing them back into use for effective use, whether that's about changing use and being proactive in bringing those back in so they can be used effectively. The second priority around our, the housing quality and standards in housing, particularly focused on our private rented sector and owner occupied sector, and looking at how we use both the carrot and the stick in supporting good quality in those sectors. So there is enforcement action if we need to take it, but also support and encouragement to landlords and to tenants to try and if, achieve a good quality that is effective and, and sustainable for people to live in safely so they can live effective lives. The third priority around vulnerable people, and that's a, a range of our vulnerable citizens. So looking at obviously rough sleepers as a particular vulnerability and homelessness, but also the right sort of housing to meet the needs of those with you know, learned disability, looked after children coming out of care, those sort of you know, particular specialist areas of supported housing that supports their needs. And then lastly, a priority around how we use housing development and regeneration to support additional homes coming into the city that are in the right place and meet the right needs and also support our generation agenda. So there are detailed plans beneath the strategy, but there are also a number of specific um, policies, strategies that do the more detailed work around pieces of this jigsaw, so our allocations policy, empty homes, homelessness, housing renewal, etc. And those strategies are up for renewal in the next 12 months. And there'll be more detailed work that underpins those strategies that are underneath this overarching strategy. I would reference for members on the basis of the debates last night at Executive Gutini, climate change and our need to take into account carbon reduction are referenced throughout the document. It is an important understanding of the variety of housing conditions that we recognise that the climate impacts of those and they are embedded in the strategy and it is part of it. And really this is about asking members to agree to adopt the overarching strategy for housing. Thank you, Chairman. Jay, you're on mute. Sorry, thank you. Um, yes, can I just mention at this point we've been joined by Councillor Anderson, the Chair of the Executive Scrutiny Committee. Uh, welcome. 
and also we've got Simon, the finance officer, present as well, I believe. So um, thank you for that, Rachel. Um, Roy, councillor, did you want to add to that at this point? At this point, yes, Chair. Uh, it's a strategy document. It's over 10 years, as Rachel has said. But what we are looking to do is an annual review of this document because, as has been mentioned, COVID-19, we don't know the recommendations on outcomes uh, from the pandemic and any recommendations that come from that will need to be incorporated into this strategy document. Uh, Rachel also mentioned the uh, climate change agenda and although that is included in this strategy, uh, part and parcel of the review process is any new and emerging strategies. So it is a fluid document. It will be reviewed on an annual basis and it will take into account any changes both locally and nationally to do with any housing issues. So can I recommend that uh, the strategy is adopted? Chair, may I have something to add if possible? Mike. Mike. I've, done it. I've done it again. Sorry, we um, we have Councillor Shank who's indicated to speak, but also once he's we, he's done that, we'll, we'll need to deal with the recommendations from exec scrutiny last night. So, Councillor Shanker first. Thank you, Chair. Um, appreciating the strategy, strategy is a ten-year document. Um, it's it's rather disappointing, and there's a couple of um, recommendations which hopefully are sensible and will be accepted. Um, as everyone's aware, the council uh, did pass a climate emergency motion, uh, and I think that's been passed in plenty of time to be included in this strategy. There's not one mention in this strategy of the um, the climate emergency declared by the council. There's a couple of light touch. Um, uh, references to uh, the impact on the climate, but it's probably one of the biggest areas in uh, the Council's remit in where we could introduce measures uh, in new builds and retrofits to make uh, one of the biggest contributions uh, to improve the impact on the climate. And I don't think that's been done deliberately, it's probably just, just an omission. So I think the two sensible recommendations to um, make sure that this is at the forefront of the housing strategy would be sensible uh, to adopt, not not just on the um, uh, on, on the fact that it uh, will make some serious contributions in mitigating the, the um, uh, uh, impact on the climate, but also just to demonstrate as well that the council is serious uh, about about the climate. It's, it's a 10-year it's a strategy, and if um, if this was going to be reviewed pretty soon when the Climate Change Board gets to meet uh, and we could include these in the strategy, it would probably be less of a concern. But um, you know, the, the climate emergency was passed now uh, quite a while ago, and it's just really, really disappointing that um, it's not been included in more detail. So I think um, rather than dwelling on it too much longer here, uh, I'd, I'd just urge the Cabinet to take the uh, recommendation seriously and actually agree with them rather than just uh, noting them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, so I think Councillor Holmes, you want to respond to Councillor Schenker? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll sort of wrap up the, um, the exec scrutiny uh, recommendations in that as well. Uh, Appendix 1, uh, page 27, that actually does um, very specifically talk about climate change in relation to this strategy. It talks about declaring the climate emergency for the city, um, and what we're reviewing and what we're going to strengthen and, and the way forward and the framework that we, we, um, we, we're going to put into place to do that. And 
what we're trying to achieve. So I think there is. Uh, it may have been missed in, in the debate last night. It may have been missed by, by all concerned because it's not just the report paper that we need to be focusing on here. There is a very detailed Appendix 1 which spells out the actual strategy and on page 27 it clearly includes in some detail the climate change agenda. On that chair, and this dips into the Exec Scrutiny Board uh, recommendations, um, I would like to just, uh, I believe, strengthen, um, keying into what Councillor Shankar just said, where on to page 27 of Appendix 1, the first bullet point where it says establish a series of climate change subgroups that will report to a cross-party Derby, Derby City climate change working group. Well, actually, I would um, ask for Cabinet to agree a, a change to that particular bullet point, that first bullet point, because for me, um, there has to be a recognition of the overview and scrutiny that this council has um, in terms of the pathway towards cabinet and therefore changing policy and strategy. I think that's important to recognise. So therefore, I would suggest um, for agreement that the bullet point should read, um, uh, establish a working stream via the Derby City uh, cross-party working um, group uh, that will report to the relevant overview and scrutiny board bracket S bracket, as in boards, because this may span over several boards. And the logic to that is, is to be very clear that the climate change working group do need to dip into this and consider this issue and take it forward and help us take it forward. Um, that may or may not be via, you know, subgroups or, or whatever. But, you know, I think it's very it needs to be um, the working group that then report back to overview and scrutiny so that it's done the right way and it doesn't bypass the, the overview and scrutiny and the governance of this council. And I think that would actually strengthen this. So um, if you're agreeable, uh, uh, Chair, and the Cabinet are agreeable, I'd like to make uh, that change to, to Appendix 1, bullet point 1 on change on uh, page 27. The, um, Sorry, so Matt, I think, can, I, yeah. can I just, it might be useful just at this point to put up the recommendations from last night whilst you're talking through them. Yeah, okay. If Alex, if you could do that, please. So while he's doing that, Chair, I yeah, think what, I, what I've just uh, described would deal with um, number two, because we are committing in, in the appendix exactly working with the, the working party. And, you know, we've had a, a global pandemic we've been dealing with. So obviously it hasn't been possible to, to necessarily uh, move forward with working party meetings, but obviously we will be doing uh, as soon as possible. So I think that deals with recommending recommendation number two. Recommendation number one from the scrutiny board um, was to have more detail on climate change. But I believe that actually, whether it was an emission or whether, uh, I don't know, but um, appendix one, page 27, answers that um, request in my view already, Chair. The third um, recommendation I would probably have to defer to um, Councillor Webb or an officer because it's slightly outside of my portfolio. Okay, thank you Councillor Holmes. I think we've got one or two indications here to speak and I think the first was Councillor Skelton I believe. Thank you Chair. Um, just looking at the appendix, uh, I think it's page 33, where it talks about um, the specialist accommodation, in particular extra care. It says we have over 326 um, units thus far, and that's uh, over some several years of, of um, having these schemes uh, brought forward. Um, casting my mind back, um, probably about eight years, nine years, um, I believe we had um, a target of 900 and something um, to actually uh, achieve uh, that number of units. Um, and I was wondering whether there is a sort of a timeline where we're actually going to try and, and do it within a certain number of years. Um, because obviously we're only about a third of the way there now. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Paul Simpson, you wanted to add? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, it, well, it was really just to reiterate, I guess, the, the, some of the points that, that Councillor Holmes was making, but I guess a, a, a kind of catch-all, because clearly sustainability and the green agenda uh, uh, are right at the top of the City Council's agenda, and I think it's worth pointing out that in in the um, the, the, the kind of uh, paragraph 9.1 it talks about 
other significant implications and it references the council plan 2019 to 23 and one of the key themes of the council's plan is is the city of health and happiness and on the back of that one of the one of the commitments that the council's got as as relating to a city of health and happiness is working with our partners to reduce the, the city's carbon footprint so i think i think perhaps you know what we might need to think about as a as an officer cohort is is, is perhaps just having a, a separate section at the end of our reports that that talks about um climate specifically but i think it's there but perhaps not as clear as as it as it might be chair but but certainly it's it's clearly you know one of our top priorities so i, I would suggest that going forward our, our cabinet reports perhaps have a, a sustainability or or climate um impact um paragraph like similar to financial implications legal implications so on so we'll make sure that happens chair thank you Thank you. I think that would be useful just to reaffirm my commitment to climate change issues and to deal with it in every aspect of the Council's work. So I've got Councillor Anderson and, and Rachel North. But if you don't mind, uh, Dom, I'm going to ask Rachel to address Recommendation 3 first yeah. in relation to um, broadcasting the details. So over to you, Rachel, and then I'll bring you in afterwards, Dom. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Porter. Yes, so um, on item three, we do already promote the landlord accreditation scheme um, through our um, a DASH service, which is quite well known at a regional level, but absolutely we'll be happy to further extend that communication messages and you know do more promotion of that to make sure that everyone is aware of it. I think particularly relevant as we come out of COVID and then we are likely to see an increase in potential landlord and um, tenant issues. So the more we can make sure they're aware of this scheme that supports and encourages mediation and people to stay in their own homes and support, the better. So happy to do that. And, and just to answer the question from Councillor Scott, Skelton. Um, one of the sub strategies uh, in the overarching one beneath it is our older people's housing strategy and that is up for review in the next 12 months and that will be addressing the detail of timelines around things like extra care units etc. Okay thank you for that. Uh, any questions to Rachel on that before I go to Councillor Anderson who wants to speak to the presentation of the recommendations from last night? No, Councillor Anderson then, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, uh, as was pointed out, I think I think it was pointed out in the meeting, certainly by Councillor Kerr um, and also officer colleagues, um, the sections where, where the, the, you know, there was a mention of climate change within the, uh, the appendix. Um, uh, and so that, I guess that some supporting information, obviously, for one and two, but it was still felt um, by members of the committee uh, that, that they would like to still bring forward those recommendations. Um, recommendation three um, was something that I felt quite strongly about in that um, as much as it is well known locally, DASH, um, it can't be that well known because I was a renter for a good 15 years and never knew about it. And uh, so I, I guess to some extent as well, also some information um, to councillors on that, you know, whether it covers private tenants only or, or tenants who are within a letting a letting agency would be useful but certainly um, an improved common strategy on it to enable people to really use it and it to be a real rubber stamp for the people of Derby who you know have uh, lettings concerns okay thank you it sounds like your daughter's been reassured by uh, by Rachel North I wonder if if that's been able to give you that reassurance on 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 uh, recommendation three uh, yeah that that sounds sounds good to me I mean I, I'm probably gonna talk to Rachel offline actually and ask a few questions about it um, my child only talks when I'm talking seemingly as well so, yeah, <laughs> apologies <for that. laughs> no problem um, okay so I think we've dealt with in detail the recommendations and with that uh, slight amendment recommended by um, by um, Councillor Holmes. Any other contributions to make at this point? Just, uh, just to say, Chair, that uh, on the accreditation scheme, we are working in partnership with Derby University to deliver 
uh, landlord accreditation scheme and the tenants seeking to rent accommodation during their studies in the city are encouraged to only use accredited landlords so their marketing at the university uh, does reflect this and we will jointly continue to promote the benefits of the scheme ensuring that students have access to decent and well managed accommodation within the city as well as uh, keeping landlords working with us to improve those standards so there is a lot of work going on and on the first uh, recommendation the housing strategy will be reviewed in light of the climate change strategy as this emerges over the next few months it shouldn't uh, fundamentally prevent the current strategy being adopted though and we would naturally take into uh, account uh, strategic objectives over the course of the 10-year lifetime of this strategy okay thank you appreciate that uh, councillor Holmes has got one final clarification just please. to check with officers chair if I may are they okay with the wording that I um, that I put forward for replacing the bullet point or would they like me to repeat it at all um, not sure whether they just got that um, in the... I'm quite I'm quite comfortable with it thank you councillor Holmes okay um, chair just to maybe uh, sum up then on the exec scrutiny uh, recommendations I believe that we're noting one and two and, and agreeing three okay in that case unless there's any other contributions we have one recommendation one um, recommendation of the report is at 2.1 to agree the adoption of the housing strategy 2020-2029. Sorry Chair, can I, can I just come in and just seek some clarification from Councillor Holmes there? Uh, earlier on he was uh, strengthening recommendations 1 and 2 and am I right in hearing he's saying he's now just noting them recommendations that he's strengthened and not accepting them? No, Councillor Shanker, I added context to strengthen the issues that were raised by Exec Scrutiny Board. Um, we're noting one and two for the reasons that I've offered everybody, uh, and we're agreeing three. But you, you, you did mention you were, you were strengthening recommendation one and two earlier on. Uh, strengthening the principle of what was, being recommend, what was being asked of us. So I'm very happy to note one and two uh, for the reasons I've given, which has strengthened the debate, I believe, and the detail behind the, uh, the suggestions from exec scrutiny that we weren't quite doing as much as they'd like. Okay, so just to be clear, you're not accepting those recommendations there? Councillor Shanko, we've made it clear we're noting one and two and, are, and we're, at, we're agreeing three. Yeah. So the answer is no. With that amendment that strengthens the, the acknowledgement of the recommendations. So, uh, moving on then, as I say, we've got one recommendation at 2.1. Cabinet, are we agreed? Yes. Agreed. 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 Okay. Yep, agreed. Sounds like we're fully agreed. Moving on to item 8, I believe it is, is it Derby Recovery Plan? Who's leading this out, please? Uh, I'll be leading that, Chair, if I may. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So um, I'm obviously uh, pleased to present the, uh, the this report. Um, I don't think it's it's uh, understating or overplaying the the, um, the 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 start to this report in terms of the purpose of it, um, and 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 the everybody uh, who's listening to this this meeting will have been touched by coronavirus in, in one form or either directly or indirectly in terms of the impact that it's had on all of us and how we live our daily lives and and clearly um, uh, we've spent the last three months most of us in in, in lockdown um, and that's had significant consequences as I say for our daily lives um, and as we begin to emerge from that situation um, I think it's only right and proper that the city um, uh, begins to prepare for that rec for the recovery from 
the last three months and the challenges that that represents. And I think uh, it certainly also wouldn't be overstating, Chair, the, the impact uh, on Derby specifically. Um, uh, for those who haven't seen it, the Centre for C Cities um, have identified Derby as, as the city likely to be a a third worst affected as a result of the impact of coronavirus, largely because of the uh, reliance we have on our um, highly successful manufacturing sector and, and our world-renowned employers, uh, Rolls-Royce, Bombardier, Toyota, um, and Rolls-Royce in particular, who, who sadly have, have recently announced um, uh, significant reductions in, in their workforce as a result of the impact on the aerospace industry. So I think those things are, are, are well understood, Chair, and, and, and well rehearsed, and, and, and I'm, I've been really pleased with the response that um, uh, my officers, but, but not just our officers, our politicians, um, and also really, really importantly, our partners, uh, our stakeholders, and we've got a very strong public, private, academia, voluntary sector partnership across this city, and they come together as one um, and are standing shoulder to shoulder with, with our employers and our employees. Um, uh, and of course our, our communities and of course the city council itself because clearly the city council is operating as we are now in very differently to how we were three years ago so what we are what this report does chair is is begin to frame how the the the, the city will respond to the coronavirus situation both in terms of uh from an economic perspective but also just as importantly from a community perspective uh, and also, really importantly for us as, as the City Council itself, um, how, uh, how we as a City Council are going to respond in terms of bringing our services back into use. A number of them uh, have clearly been closed for the period of lockdown. And, and I think it's uh, really important as well, Chair, for, for me as the Chief Exec to, to say, take this opportunity to say a big thank you um, as I have done previously to everybody uh, who's been involved in the response to COVID over the course of the last three months. I think the response from our, our staff, our, our communities, our volunteers, our partners has been um, nothing short of tremendous and um, I think we've come together uh, really, really strongly and effectively to support our city through what is a really, really challenging time. Um, so it's important as well, Chair, to stress that this isn't the, the, the report itself. That is a, a work in progress, but clearly work is underway. And what this report does is, is seek to set that framework. Um, and we're hoping to bring the report itself um, um, uh, later on uh, in the summer. Uh, and obviously we will we will ensure that there are opportunities for um, our partners um, to contribute to that, uh, other sectors, and of course, importantly, uh, the other group leaders who are, are on this call. And, and we've spoken about this in the in the group leaders calls. And I think that's a really really important perspective to draw because this is this is this is a party political issue. This is a, this is about the future of our city. Um, and I'm sure is something that we can hopefully all align behind as being mission critical over the course of the next 18 months, two years. So um, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that, Chair. Um, I, I think it is important to say I was on a, I was on a call yesterday uh, with Marketing Derby on a panel um, and there are other colleagues that we're working with on the recovery plan also on that panel. Uh, and, the, and I guess the phrase I... I've used is is everything's changed but nothing's changed uh, and, and what I mean by that is actually this city you know we we were ambitious before COVID we had a lot of plans in place to to change the, the city for the better to work across the city to work with our partners um, to change the city for the better and of course this has come at a really difficult time but I think it's important that we continue with those plans we remain optimistic we remain um, innovative and and we continue to push the, the business case for derby with uh, national government to seek their support which again we are on with um, and i think it's important that anybody that's listening to this this meeting can can be confident that we as um as senior leaders and working with obviously our politicians are are pressing government very hard for support to ensure that derby gets the support that it, it quite rightly needs 
Um, so I'll end there, Chair. I'm obviously happy to take uh, any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, one of the co-authors of this report is uh, one of our directors, Greg Jennings, who this is potentially his last meeting. So I'm going to bring him in as one of those officers partially responsible for drawing up this um, um, this recovery plan. But uh, I'd like to say firstly that, um, and then I'm going to ask Alex if he can put up the recommendations because uh, they're going to draw out some extra points in relation to this item. But I want to just say in, in acknowledgement firstly of, and we'll talk about the response to the COVID virus in the next item, but uh, to thank officers for their absolutely front foot reaction to this and uh, and to thank the partners in throughout the city because they are desperately engaged with us in this process and I think we have probably an exemplar and a lead throughout the country in both regards to the response that we've made to COVID and the plans and there is our response to the need to have a, a detailed medium and long term uh, recovery plan. So Alex, if you could bring up the recommendations and I'll give uh, Greg maybe his final opportunity to contribute <laughs> to, to Cabinet. Um, thank you, Chair. Crikey, last word, that puts the pressure on Chris, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if I just may make a couple of points just to follow on from what you said. I mean, the count, in terms of my reflections, the council has been absolutely brilliant at pulling together, working with partners in the health service and others to react and to mitigate the impact of COVID. And what this report does is then obviously look forward and say, we need to continue that leading role that we have successfully done to work with our partners, businesses, uh, community groups, etc., to help the city rec recover. Um, and the two points I would like to make is, of course, when we talk about recovery plan, we, we do envisage this as three legs. There's the economic recovery plan, which is very much in the public eye at the moment because of the redundancies and the impact on the economy. The organisation itself has to, to recover. You know, we've taken a hit and there's things that we need to do. And al there's also the community. And one of the great things about this is just evidence is that the strength of the community in Derby. Uh, and so there are those three legs, economic recovery, um, the organisation and community recovery. And then my, my second point, if I may, I, whilst we use the word recovery and it's a kind of a convenient proxy, actually when we have, and there's a lot of work going into this from officers and uh, partners, but w when we, we look at this, it's not simply trying to recover to rebuild the past. Of course, there's some of that, but this is a, a phenomenal opportunity to also rebuild the city that we want for the future in terms of its economy, the council itself, and the community. And certainly on the economy, which is the bit that I have been had most involved in and I am leading on, we, we have this sort of mantra saying, well, yes, we're trying to maintain confidence in the economy, but we're trying to diversify it so we're more resilient. And we're also trying to look to the future and decarbonise it. So I think that the plan or the plans that come out of this, and as, um, as Paul Simpson said, we're not quite here yet to present a plan, but we will be, will be very much looking forward, very much transformational, um, realistic, but also ambitious. Um, and that's exactly how we should be as a council chair. So thank you very much. Thank you, Greg, and thank you for your contributions to this and one or two other things along the way over the last <laughs> few weeks and years and months and, and thank whatever. You. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm, we've got the uh, recommendations up from last night. And if I deal with them, um, uh, touch on them firstly. The first one talks about the council being ambitious. Well, you don't need any reassurances on that. This this cabinet is extremely ambitious in its in its plans, not least in terms of its recovery plan. And actually, uh, we intend to brief uh, group, or I intend to brief group leaders in the following follow-on meeting in regards, certainly into the uh, city centre aspects of the recovery plan in some detail. So we can agree that for sure. Uh, recommendation number two talks about. 
um, opportunities from people all from across all communities and sectors to be heard in the development of this plan well that's already in place and uh, the the uh, steering group and the and subgroups in relation to uh, economic recovery include all the relevant people and and it will also be addressed at the new formed newly formed reformed uh, leadership groups so we can agree to that as well in relation to number three the the recommendation that health thinking be embedded in the recovery plan well as uh, officers have already alluded to this recovery plan is just not about uh, an economic recovery it's threefold it's about corporate recovery for the council and, and has been alluded to the fact that we will need to change uh, practices but it's yes it's, it's economic recovery but it's also about communities and, and as part of the, the recovery for the communities then surely the um, health inequalities within the communities that have been um, highlighted will be addressed as well so we can equally address that one the fourth recommendation is in relation to uh, work carried out being carried out in parallel for both immediate and longer term strands of the recovery plan well surely we will we do and we are already planning for immediate short term medium term and long term as part of of the recovery aspects that we're dealing with so that can be agreed and the final one is in relation to community recovery we should not only look at the usual partners to, to collaborate with but also invite the volunteers who have contributed uh, to the COVID emergency and not least in that regard is the community action and, and all the people that have um, been involved in the the, the immediate response that we're going to deal with shortly so yes that by all means that can be agreed it looks like having said that so we can agree all five of those recommendations either we're doing them already or we will certainly uh, accept the principles of those uh, councillor Schenker did you want to come in thank you chair um, no um, I'll just briefly say absolutely delighted that um, uh, you're proposing to the cabinet to agree all five of them recommendations uh, this is a is a report in my view and and not a plan but as quickly as possible that we can get uh, the work started on that recovery plan and um, appreciating what the chief executive said about us being uh, ambitious uh, before uh, COVID arrived I think it's just as important that we remain uh, ambitious and play our part uh, as a, uh, a leading role from the council uh, and being able to facilitate uh, that recovery plan involving uh, other stakeholders partners and the wider community as much as possible uh, and um, just like to put on record our group's commitment to work with the administration to make sure we do that um, as effectively and as quickly as possible that's certainly appreciated and I'm hopeful that that can be echoed across the other group members as well and we can tackle this on a on a apolitical cross-party uh, basis for the recovery of the city councillor Ralston thank you chair um, I just too wanted to come in on on the um, the uh, hard work that's been going on by the voluntary sector of the community I've had the privilege of being the uh, COVID counsellor if you like and, and working cross party with every member um, and we've seen some great working on this um, from all areas from all wards from all councillors whatever little or as maximum everybody can do on their own terms we've really pulled together as a city um, and I think community action I've had the pleasure of, of visiting the Pakistani Community Centre, the Food Forum and various other people um, during this time, obviously social distancing and understanding how things are working. Um, and I think it would it, we all agree and personally it's the best thing to do is to try and build on that as a voluntary sector, to build with our teams, to create these hubs that communicate better um, as, as localities and wards, as every ward is different, every ward is unique and the approaches that we have made um, 
in those wards have been absolutely phenomenal um, and we couldn't have done that without the community um, without the voluntary sector without the officers and everybody that has pulled in and, and got to where we have with this it's been absolutely amazing so um, my thanks to everybody who has continued their efforts thank you i suspect we'll hear a little bit more about that in item 11 and the council's response to covid19 so unless there's any other direct comments in relation to the recovery plan we have one recommendation and that is um that is to um approve the approach for developing the derby recovery plan can that be agreed cabinet please agreed, agreed. okay in that case um so be it and the next item is in uh, financial matters is it simon to do uh, to do in relation to that yes Thank you, Chair. Um, this is the normal capture of those uh, decisions required to be compliant with the contract and financial procedure rules. There are four areas for your consideration tonight. One is uh, it, approval to write off uh, £46,000 for debt in respect of the Connect Derby properties. These debts relate to a period 2015 to 2017. And you can see the reason for a write-off on the report. But it's important to note that Connect Derby is one of the real success areas, both in terms of occupancy and, if you want to call it, in recovery of rent and service charge. The second area is in respect of the South Derby growth zone. Members will recall that, unfortunately, we were not successful uh, in the last round of the HIF funding for this area, but it remains of vital importance to the city, and this is about uh, uh, bidding for capacity funding to help that go forward, and I'd hope that we'd be successful in that area. Just before COVID, um, the Council uh, had an announcement that alongside Nottingham and Nottinghamshire, um, we were successful in the Transforming Cities Fund programme which has uh, a number of elements, uh, improvements in um, transport uh, infrastructure within the city, our share 62 million, connectivity with Nottingham, and also connectivity to the uh, East Midlands Airport. So this is really just formalising the uh, governance announcement as Nottingham City are the accountable body, and uh, again, really celebrating the success of getting that money um, to start transforming uh, the cities and the infrastructure supporting our city. And the final area on here is to is in respect of the uh, local air quality plan, where um, members will recall uh, that there have been a number of reports previously in how we're responding to our air quality management plan and uh, working with DEFRA, and this is formalising, if you want to call it, the the final business case which draws down the funding to deliver our obligations in respect to that uh, um, directive. So the recommendations, uh, Chair, are detailed in the report and I'm happy to take questions on the content. Thank you. Any, any questions directly for Simon before we put up the recommendation from Exec Scrutiny? Alex, perhaps you could pull that, that up for us. <coughs> so there was just one, and that was in relation to the uh, Transforming Cities Fund Programme and, and the recommendation that Council ensures that appropriate reviews take place on the plans post-COVID and that council stakeholders and the wider public have opportunities to input detailed schemes before uh, 2.9 of the, of the report. Probably I'm going to ask uh, Rachel North to, I think it's probably Rachel to respond to this, but um, so far, you know, it's a fantastic um, opportunity for us in the Transforming Cities Fund. Certainly in, in conversations with Nottingham, they are absolutely acknowledge the need to review the um, the plans and those plans submitted 
to government in relation to what this money would be spent on. There's an acknowledgement that it needs to be reviewed in the in the in the light of COVID, um, and so far indications from government are that they are prepared to work with us on some of those flexibilities. I don't know if uh, Rachel North needs to uh, contribute further, in particular in relation to what consultation can take place and how much change and flexibility there is in this funding. Thank you, Chris. And I'd like Verna Bayliss to comment on that, if that's okay, if she's in the call. That's fine. I am here, yes. Um, uh, as you said, Councillor Poulter, the, uh, any changes, the funding has been agreed with the Department for Transport, so any changes we make to the programme and vary, variations we make will have to be done in conjunction with them anyway. But as you said, I, I think my own view is that we're going to do that anyway and look at the, the plans in, in relation to COVID. And as far as consultation, well, we would do that naturally as part of, part of our everyday working. So uh, to develop the plans, we, we had a public consultation. We obviously went to active travel. We went to the strategic bus partnership, DRB, et cetera, all the, all the consultation groups that we would normally uh, work with. And then obviously on specific projects um, and uh, as uh, that affect neighbourhoods, etc. We would be doing local consultations anyway. So I would see that that that, that work is implicit in what we'll do uh, as we carry out the, this uh, this long, large programme. Okay, so effectively that recommendation can be acknowledged and agreed uh, as part of of that process. Um, Chair, if I may contribute. Yeah, Councillor Holmes, moments. Just thank you, Chair. Just just quickly to say, um, may I have it minuted, please? Uh, my thanks and the thanks of the Cabinet for the officers' sterling work on not just Transforming Cities Fund, but Future Mobility Zone funding, and more recently, the emergency uh, COVID transport uh, proposals that were put forward. And there are many other, obviously, pots of funding that uh, a great deal of work has been put in by officers. And I commend their efforts. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have been able to achieve these major objectives and to move forward with what will be transformative programs. So if I could, if I could Chair, if we could have that minuted, our thanks to those officers for that hard work. Absolutely, I'm sure the Cabinet can uh, can agree that. Um, so unless there's any other contributions, we have recommendations 2.1 through to 2.10, if they can be agreed, Cabinet? Yes. Agreed. 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 Okay. Um, moving on then, I think it's the final item is the, the response to COVID-19. Uh, Who's going to do that on this one, please? I am Chair. So, uh, Thank you, Simon. Simon Riley. Um, so um, it's already been acknowledged the the brilliant work across the city in responding to uh, the community and business needs uh, linked to COVID at this really uncertain time. But this report really tries to probably capture some of that uh, effort, passion and uh, real change that has come out as a result of this. So when COVID came about, we worked very swiftly with partners, and that includes CCG, it includes uh, Derby Home, it includes Community Action Derby and community groups to establish plans and arrangements that uh, really made sure that our vulnerable people in the community got the health and care they needed, that we created that community hub that supported those who were both shielding but also other needs, trying to support businesses and trying to stay resilient and keeping people informed about what to do and where to go for help. And uh, I know all members know that uh, um, despite, if you want to call it, the myriad of government announcements, we really got a lot of those in place early and meeting our community needs and some of those were done prior to the government because it was an announcement because it was the right thing to do so yes we we did um we did work very quickly in creating those partnership arrangements and they've been proven not only to be an essential safety net but also transforming some of how we are operating as a city and into the future um, if I can just maybe pick out a few themes in, in this report and uh, um, just to maybe highlight how we work together to achieve um, good outcomes for a city in this very difficult time. 
The first is in respect of supporting vulnerable people to get the health and care they need. And this is from if you want to call the bottom up of helping those who are shielding and isolating at home. But we also know, and as demonstrated by the sign outside the hospital, the wonderful work that both NHS and our social workers have done in the hospital, in the discharge lounge, making sure people had safe pathways out into residential and nursing home settings. We worked with the CCG to secure additional capacity to that happen in a, in a safe and orderly fashion. We've been working to make sure that uh, we make payments uh, to providers uh, to help them meet the needs of the, sort of the, um, the current pandemic. And indeed, actually, um, our staff have been leading on both training, testing and setting up, up a whole lot of the frameworks. And that is being acknowledged both locally and uh, uh, nationally as being good practice. And uh, um, I think uh, the success is that uh, people are, have been able to be discharged from the hospital safely into community settings. Members will be aware that we've got recent targeted funding for infection control, of which 75% is going to be passed directly to care homes. And the 84 care homes in the city, we have good and productive relationships with, whether we've got people placed in them or not. Um, another area which I think is worth stressing is our community hub, where suddenly we translate from a service which is five days a week to originally seven days a week, and I think it was until seven or eight o'clock at night, securing the help of a thousand volunteers, two two thousand requests for service from vulnerable people. That could be medication, it could just be chat for mental health well-being, it could be access to information. And again, that wasn't just the council doing it, but working with Community Action Derby. And uh, uh, I think most councillors will recognise the thanks that we've got from the community who have benefited. But something which I think is really transformational is how we managed to support the rough sleepers or roofless people in the city. Um, members, again, will be aware that we secured the use of a holiday inn. But actually, just finding accommodation wasn't the end of the journey. We wanted to get a wrap round care of uh, um, getting people from so the NHS, mental health, probation, um, uh, Derby Mission. All of those people provided a wrap round care to the people there. And I think the success is that over this time, we've normally had occupancy of, say, 40 to 50 residents a night. And if you think about that, for people who in a sense, lived um, probably chaotic lives, having some of that put round them has created more stability and more support for them. And the government almost, I won't say they picked up our example, but Dame uh, uh, Casey, I think it is, the, um, is actually saying the new model is um, exactly what we've been doing here in Derby. And uh, that they don't want ruthless people to go back onto the streets and we might want to explore that uh, when I finish this report. And I suppose just the other service area that uh, I think does need to get recognition here is our operational services director, primarily Street Pride, but also the crematorium and uh, other areas. Um, it's not easy when you go into lockdown and social distancing to carry on as normal. But members will be aware that really we only had a temporary disruption in our service. You were able to bring back the brown bin service in early May. You were able to sort of increase capacity and work with faith groups at the crematorium. And also reopening Rainsway. Um, our communication to ensure the community understood what was happening is being held up as a national exemplar. You only have to go across the border to realise that people were queuing four hours to enter a tip. Whereas if you remember on that opening weekend, people were saying, this is a way that I like and feel that I've um, had an option to come to the tip, not to queue. I've got my slot. It's not limited to one every sort of a month or whatever. And people really thank the council for that. Um, just to maybe pick up one theme that I've been very closely involved in, in terms of support to businesses. We've given 81 million of support to businesses through rate relief or business rate grants. And that has really helped a lot of businesses get through this very difficult time. Um, and uh, 
that's a huge input of um, money to support the Derby economy. And we hope that uh, for a lot of businesses, this will help them to come out of the other end of lockdown, still being a viable business and being able to rebuild their business model. Um, the government has given us money um, for um, COVID, just about 14.9 million. Uh, we haven't spent it all yet, but obviously we're only in May and the ongoing impact of services being shut, um, uh, costs that we have to invest in additional social distancing, supporting the care sector are still significant. But I think our governance arrangements and our decisions have actually delivered a very good value for money solution to that. But probably just to conclude in my uh, presenting report, it's, it's really the community coming together to find solutions which actually have delivered the right solution for the city and not just being a knee jerk, here's some money, try and solve it. And uh, the COVID response has actually created, as I think has been said earlier, a platform to go forward, which I hope this report indicates that the city should be proud of. Uh, that's, uh, that's my report, Chair, on behalf of all of the council and the community. And I'm happy to take questions along with any of the other officers. Thank you, Simon. Thanks for that. Um, what was an overview and uh, and summary of of the good work that's taken place throughout the city. And actually, look at the report, and it talks about the purpose being that just um, members to have an overview of the response to COVID-19 and the decisions taken. Uh, place as a result of the emergency powers. We've had to be extremely agile, extremely flexible, extremely committed to be able to create the response that we have, which has been acknowledged in all four, in all, and of a wide variety of circles as being, as far as possible, the best response possible. And we could spend hours talking about the detail of, of the response that we've made, to the point that actually recommendation one says, um, we should acknowledge um, the actions taken. Well, for me, we could have 300 recommendations identifying all the different departments, all the different community organizations, individuals, partners, and whatever. It's just the, the, the amount of effort um, that's gone into all this is just too much to individually acknowledge. And I can't express mine and the Cabinet's thanks to all those people involved any further than that, really. Uh, we did get two recommendations from uh, Exec Scrutiny, if we could put them up. But I think, Councillor Ralston, you wanted to add to uh, the contributions. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say, um, along with all the other positive things that um, Simon spoke about there, um, I wanted, you know, from a point of view of, of um, my responsibility from the COVID side of things, to thank um, the directors of service that have been in there for us um, every time we've called at whatever time of night or whatever time in the morning when we've got queries, um, and for my fellow colleagues, um, cabinet members, who, again, I, I don't think any single one of us um, has had a day off off in the last few weeks um, in terms of not being able to, to um, you know, prioritise exactly what the city needs to do. And I think more than anything, we've worked as an amazing team, um, both with the directors and the and ourselves. Um, and across the whole scenario, I've loved the fact that it's shown what this city can do. Um, we, the city can do um, cross-party. Um, it shows the, 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 the natural um, fantastic communities, diverse communities, varied communities across the city that have pulled together. Um, and so I just wanted to, again, say my thanks. I think one of the one things that we've um, really come on leaps and bounds in the last few uh, couple of weeks um, and one that wasn't picked up um, as, a, as a specific thank you was the IT teams of the council um, in order to, for us to sort of pick up and run from day one. I know all admin teams and everybody has been significant, but in order for us to all carry on and, 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 um, and work from home, um, the systems have had to leap forward. Um, and I know that's been a shock to the system for many to go into this new virtual world. Um, and it's um, sometimes frustrating, um, but it's come on leaps and bounds and we're where we wanted to be um, to a certain extent within a few weeks um, of where we were planning to be in a couple of years. <laughs> um, so in, in, with, every positive, with every negative, there's a positive. 
give. So again, thanks um, to that. And as you said, Chris, there's only so many thank yous you can do. And apologies, I've missed anybody. Um, and I think we've all tried to cover as many people as we can in this. But the, the main push is that this wouldn't have been ha happened without every single member pulling together, every single officer pulling together, and the voluntary sector and every resident in this city. So thank you. Okay, so we've got um, one or two indicating they'd like to contribute, but if I can just deal with quickly the recommendations uh, from last night, firstly, and the first one is to recommend that Council Cabinet uh, notes the Executive Scrutiny Board's strong rec endorsement of 2.2, .2, and that is to absolutely acknowledge the contributions of those that have helped in the in the response. And to, yes, by all means, we can agree that. And in actual fact, uh, we've already um, formulated a, a um, an item or to be brought to full council in a short time period of time, which will be running past group leaders at the follow-on meeting from here, which seeks to acknowledge that contribution from everybody involved. And recommendation two was in relation to the fact that by no means is this pandemic over and we need to not take our feet off the gas in relation to the efforts that we make and we surely acknowledge that and can agree that and are acutely aware that uh, in some ways uh, when the, uh, the effects of furloughing of people um, and maybe some more redundancies uh, emerge, then it's going to increase pressure on some sections of the community which we need to be geared for and to be able to provide the appropriate response. So in summary, yes, by all means, we can agree the two recommendations from scrutiny last night. So the next one to want to contribute, I think, was Councillor Skelton. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, just to say that um, I've had obviously dealings with um, various people in the voluntary sector um, who have in the past also worked with the council, but have certainly found um, that working with the council um, and other bodies um, during the, the, the pandemic, um, they have noticed um, a change for the better in how they're uh, perceived, um, how um, council officers relate to them, how councillors relate to them. Um, and the, the thought was, um, long may it continue. They, they feel that's been, a, if you like, one positive from from the resulting from, from this point. Thank you. Many, many positives coming out of it, not least the um, the far better working relationship with uh, public health, with the NHS, with with uh, primary care trusts and things like that. So, yes, there are many benefits that we need to uh, take advantage of that come out of this. Councillor Schenker. Thank you uh, again, Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll try being brief again. Um, just to endorse what Councillor Rolleston was saying, I think, uh, you know, this has really defined what uh, a key worker is and what a key worker was perceived as probably, you know, three or four months ago. Uh, the pace at which people have responded to support uh, residents and the community has been, been staggering, uh, and we may not have got everything right straight away, but, you know, people learn from it very, very quickly and responded to provide the, uh, the necessary support. Uh, and linking this paper back to the um, paper we had earlier, agenda item nine, I think it was, uh, just learning from some of the things and the experiences that we've uh, been through uh, in recent weeks and months, I think will be absolutely key. Uh, you know, we've eliminated uh, rough sleeping in the last three months. How do we take that forward and make sure we eliminate it permanently in our in our city? Will be absolutely key. A um, thousand volunteers coming forward. Um, Unfortunately, it hasn't been possible to utilise all those thousand volunteers because we had other people around us. But I'm sure going forward, uh, we could make sure all those volunteers have a role to play and can continue to help um, each other and the rest of the uh, citizens um, across Derby. Sadly, uh, some key workers have lost their lives 
uh, in Derby, in, in care homes, uh, in, in, in the hospitals uh, and other settings and how we um, pay tribute to and acknowledge the um, efforts and their responses uh, in ultimately sacrificing their lives it is something else we need to note and make sure uh, we respond to uh, going forward. Okay, good points, well made, and again, most of those are addressed in the in the in the, in the input to the next meeting for group leaders. Um, so I think uh, Councillor Smale was the last one to indicate to contribute. Councillor Smale, thank you, thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, Simon's already discussed this in the report, but I want to specifically home in on one particular area in my portfolio, and that's the work that's gone on behind grounds with Street Pride. Uh, it's it's been a tough challenge for for the guys in Street Pride, and they've had to work under some you know difficult circumstances. But you know there's been a lot of challenges that came on the way with you know um, social distancing with refuse collectors. So obviously we had to, we had to have some major issues around how we collect, uh, in particularly our blue bin waste. We had to put a lot of resource into making sure that our residual waste was being uh, collected, uh, and there was a lot of challenges on the way where we've managed to help bring some of these services back online and you know I want to thank all the officers involved you know that have really really jumped a lot of hurdles to keep the disruptions to a lot of our frontline services in Street Pride going during this whole pandemic and I just want to thank every single uh, other councillor across the whole floor really who have you know helped get that information out to the public because it's it's not nice people do not like having their bins being missed but you know the message that all councillors put out to their residents to help deal with um you know making sure that our refuse does get collected in the long term has really helped so you know i'd like to thank everyone all officers and all councillors for you know cooperating with the officers at street pride to to get the results that we've got thank you okay so councillor webb you wanted to uh, round this off for us. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I've got a brilliant team in housing <coughs> and in social care and in public health. They've done remarkably well through this pandemic. I can assure Councillor Shanker that we're not giving up on rough sleepers. We're not giving up on ruthless people. We are currently developing a strategy to uh, not only get them off the streets, which we have managed to do quite successfully, but the next strategy is to keep them off the streets. With regard to care homes, we're working really well across the public and private sector in care homes. We're main hoping to maintain that cooperation that we have seen and with housing we're looking to move forwards as you've seen from the housing strategy in developing a better offer for people across the city so a big thank you to everybody and behind all that sits the finance team and they have done an absolutely incredible job they've had grants to issue they have had directives on virtually a daily basis and to keep control of that uh, has been a remarkable job so a big thanks to everybody okay thank you for the, all those contributions i'm sure um, we could talk a, a lot about where we've gone, where we've come from, and where we're going to go to on this subject, but we've all done a remarkable job. So I think that concludes concludes the business of Cabinet, other than to accept the recommendations 2.2 and 2.1. Can we agree that, Cabinet? Agreed. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your attendance. Uh, can I just ask the group, um, group leaders and the officers involved in the meeting, can I suggest we have a, a comfort break, if you like, and reconvene maybe at quarter to six? Is that convenient to everybody? That's a long comfort break, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's a very long comfort I, break. I need, I, I need a lot of comfort. Ten minutes too. might do. Ten minutes or quarter of an hour. Half, an hour, half past five? Yeah, that sounds better to me. All right. Yeah. Okay, 5.30 it is. Thanks.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you and good night. Take care. Cheers, all. Chris, can we have...